most of you probably or might have come across my page on TikTok where I have shared some things about the loss of our son, Noah, who was eight months old when he passed away unexpectedly in his sleep. This, that's him, that's our son. He passed away on December 15th of 2022, so it's been about five months now. So we uh, finally have mustered up the courage, I guess, or not even really that, just kind of are finally going to talk a little bit about what happened. Noah was born on Easter Sunday of 2022. He was born April 17th at 2.02 p.m. and he weighed nine pounds, nine ounces, and he was 20 and a half inches long. Uh, he was a very, very, very easy baby. Like, just always happy. He was always laughing, always smiling, and our sleeping situation was pretty much attempted crib sleeping, but last resort co-sleeping. Basically, I breastfed Noah his entire life, so we would put him down to sleep and he was pretty easy to go to sleep but then he would wake up like once or yes, twice through the night to eat more so one of us would wake up grab noah bring him to the bed and i would feed him and then we would try to put him back in the crib and some nights he would sleep through the night in the crib some nights he would scream all night until we brought him into our bed but that basically was how we slept we didn't sleep with him until he was like about six months old i believe we would just bring him into our bed about halfway through the night Usually because bed. it was just it just was working for us at the time that's we thought we were doing what was best for our family we and were doing what was best for him we did put him to sleep in the crib every single night it was always an attempt <clears throat> and like i said some nights he would sleep through the night in the crib and other nights he just would not so we just didn't fight him if he wanted to sleep with us we would let him sleep with us if he wanted to sleep in the crib then great he would sleep in the crib yeah, but we'd also too if we would wake up and he was still in the bed we would just put him in the crib. yeah or if we woke up and he was in our bed we would put him in his crib and, and he would yeah, be fine what if he's like yeah the night before mm -hmm. um well actually two nights before we went to xavier's mom's house and she had like her Christmas tree up. She bought us all a bunch of presents and things like that. And she was supposed to leave to Puerto Rico um, on the day Noah passed away for vacation. So she wanted to, and she was gonna be there through Christmas and the new year, I believe. She said she wanted to have a Christmas with us and with Noah so that she could experience Christmas with him before she left. And so we went to her house. We were all wearing our Christmas pajamas. Yeah and everything. Noah got to open a bunch of Christmas presents and he was having so much fun playing with all of his toys there and like ripping up the gifts. Like he, he really had a lot of fun and he always loved being with his grandma. So that is to me like such a crazy thing that we even did that because he didn't make it to Christmas day. Mm -hmm. So we almost didn't get any Christmas with him at all. So to this day I am so so thankful that she set that up because i mean we still had christmas gifts at our house here that he never got to open and stuff which has was also like really hard but we're just so glad that he got to experience like the joy of christmas at least once even though he was a baby and he wouldn't understand like we were just so happy that he got that but the night before he passed away we basically were sitting in our room like it was a very normal day playing with his new toys with him and he was having so much fun bubbles. yeah our my mother-in-law bought him some bubbles so we were blowing bubbles at him and he was just like trying to grab them and pop them and smiling so much he and laughing, laughing so yeah. yeah we were just having like the best <clears throat> night ever and usually like the last few days he was like really hard to put to sleep yeah. like he was fighting his sleep so bad the last few days but the night before he passed away he just went to sleep without fighting it mm -hmm. so we put him in his crib because he was asleep yeah and then i did laundry i remember i washed all of his clothes so that ended up being something i was so sad about because all of Noah's dirty clothes were now washed and I didn't really have anything that smelled like him. After we put him in his crib to go to sleep, I went out into the kitchen 
and I like started preparing breast milk for the next day for daycare. Then later in the night, Noah woke up at some point and we brought him into our bed and I breastfed him and he just slept again with us through the night. Um, so on December 15th, the day that he passed away, mm. um, I, I, if you want to explain. Ugh. I woke up at 5.12. Uh, Noah was like down lower by like our knees, like if he was crawling around the bed. Which he did sometimes. Yeah. But like usually like he didn't go far. If he crawl, like we, the way we would sleep if he slept with us and we would put him in between us. So like he'd be in the middle of us. So usually he would just yeah. be like latched onto me. Yeah, he'd be latched on her, which it would, he would never really crawl away. But, but he could crawl is what yeah. I'm saying. But this is the first time that he had crawled, I think, like, you know, away from us. I saw him there, and I just thought it was funny that he had crawled down a little bit, and he was in the position that he always sleeps in, that he slept in his crib like that, where he's, like, butt up. He's, like, kind of turned to his side. I was just thinking, I was like, what is he doing? You know, I was like, why is he crawling down there? And um, so I reached to touch him. Because his feet were to us, yeah. basically. I reached to touch him, and I put my hand on his belly. And um, I was just holding his belly, I'm feeling breathing. And usually, like, if we were, you know, if he was sleeping in the crib and we we're just doing stuff, like, you know, you always you think always that to check. yourself, like, um, yeah. let me see if he's okay. But you don't actually think yeah, anything. So like, see, you just yeah, check to check, but you know they're breathing, you know? Uh, let me just see if he's okay. Let me see if he's breathing. Yeah, I placed my hand on his stomach. And I didn't feel anything. And I kind of was like, what the heck? So I sat up real quick. And I'm looking at him. And I'm like, I don't see him moving. And then I put my um, my finger, because I could see like his nose and mouth clearly. I put my finger to his his nose, and I didn't feel anything coming out. So I was like, what the heck? And then I placed my hand on his lips, and his lips were just so so cold, and I didn't feel him breathe. I didn't see him move. And like immediately I knew something was wrong and um, so I reached and I grabbed him and I yeah, pulled him to me and his arms just dropped like limp and I just like I just immediately knew I started screaming like I was saying I went from Noah Noah and I just started screaming his name and she from, That's when yeah, I woke up. Yeah, from her sleep, she knew already because, yeah. you know, I would never be screaming like that unless it was what it was. And she knew as soon as she woke up from her sleep, she just started saying, oh, my God, oh, my God. And she took him from me, and then I jumped up, and I turned the light on. And then she was looking at him with the light on and looking at his lips, his mouth, trying to open his mouth, trying to open his eyes trying to get him to respond and nothing and then she took him to the the floor to do CPR and you know I and this is all like within a split second yeah, like I moments. I heard him and I just like in my even though I was asleep I just like registered in my sleep what was happening and I jumped out of the bed and it instantly grabbed him and then I got looked up and at him for like light. one second and then I literally dropped to the floor and just started doing CPR on him on the floor as soon as I like did one compression on his chest I like I don't even know like what word to use for how I felt but it did not feel normal and I honestly, like, my first thought was not that he was gone. My thought was that he's not breathing and we need to hurry up because I don't know how much time we have. I didn't know if we had any time at all. But of course, as a parent, you're gonna just do whatever you can, no matter how much time you have or not. I know nothing about that stuff, about like, the time that you have and everything. So, like I said, I did the one compression and I, uh, immediately called 911 and just basically was screaming to them like that he's not breathing and just get over here now like I hardly even remember talking to 911 but I know that I called them immediately after yeah. trying one compression of CPR. I ran over to, to my, my in-laws room and just started 
banging on their door and screaming like help 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 and they got up right away and they're like what's going on and i was like he's not breathing he's not breathing and they were like the baby the baby and i was like the baby's not breathing he's not breathing and so they ran into the room and um my father-in-law saw him and um just obviously you know we all were just reacting to what we were seeing and he got on the floor and started to do cpr on him too and i gave him my phone so he could do like guided cpr with the dispatcher basically that whole time waiting for them to get there i think i was registering what was happening so i was just coming in and out of the room like walking in circles going inside outside looking for them and it felt like hours it felt it felt like it took them hours to get there i would just go outside just be pacing in front of the house waiting for them to get there and i was just thinking to myself like am i losing him am i losing him like we can't really be losing him right now like this this can't be right and then i just i would come back inside and i would see him like my father-in-law like this against noah's mouth and he would say no nothing nothing and i was like this is not happening and I'd go back out, back in, back out, and it was just the same thing over and over again. And then finally when they got there, I was just jumping in the street, like trying to get them to come as fast as possible. And I just remember when they ran inside, I just was saying, please help, please, please, you have to help my baby, please. Like you have to save my baby, please. As soon as they came in and saw him on the floor, they all like were very, very silent. Like they were silent when they came in and they just immediately got on the floor and started working on him and i remember they like they looked at him they were all crowded around him and again this is like happening within a split second but one of them uh put his ear to noah's face for a few seconds and then he looked up at the other guy for a split second the one across from him and i could just see the way they looked at each other that we had already lost him and they immediately just cut his shirt off and started sticking the defibrillator stickers on him mm -hmm. and that's when i just lost my mind and started just screaming and crying and i kept saying over and over again like if he's gone i'm gone and i was like i am not going to live one day without him like if he's like if we're losing him you're losing me like i don't care i i was just furious at that point yeah. and i kept asking the police officer like please tell me there's a chance please tell me there's a chance and all he would say was we're doing everything that we can we're doing everything that we can and i know they can't promise anything obviously and i know that now i know we we're already way too late but you just want somebody to tell you that like maybe there's a chance from those moments i just knew my life was going to be horrible i just knew just from how i felt not knowing even what was happening i think i knew right away as soon as i picked them up and watched his arms all back i think i knew instantly even that crossed my mind too like if, if he had even if he had just stopped breathing right then and there i was already like counting the minutes in my head i was just screaming i was just screaming and like not even like just a, already grieving him like a scared or horror scream it was just like pain i was and it even, was yeah, physical pain yeah just physically just screaming and in pain and like i just knew and i was counting the minutes the, the first yeah. responders got there and i checked the time and it was 5 22 and i was like it's already been it's already been 10 minutes it's already been way too long yeah and um then when the first responders took him into the ambulance and left with him it was probably like what a minute and a half or two minutes before we left afterward yeah. but it again felt like hours and i was just so mad thinking like why is everybody moving so slow like leave now like i don't care if you're not wearing clothes like we need to go because they didn't allow any of us into the ambulance because they said it's just gonna be too chaotic in there and they need all the space that they can get to work on him for the best possible chance but now I don't know if it's just because they already knew. I mean, I'm sure they were still trying, but I know they already knew. As 
health professionals I know they already knew but um, thank God the hospital is only like a couple minutes away like not even five minutes I don't oh, think yeah. like it's right down the street it's I probably mean, a mile away we, drove it. we got to the hospital and when we got in they had asked us something about registration and I was like I am not even <laughs> worried about that right now like take me to my son and somebody walked us back in the ER and as soon as we walked through um it's like the worst part mm -hmm. there was a there was a baby crying and for a second we all felt so relieved yeah, we all looked at each other and took a deep breath and and then she looked back at us and we walked right past the room that the baby was crying in and we walked into our room and Noah was still not breathing and still had no pulse. I asked them how long are they gonna try for and they said as long as it takes but then it felt like a minute later they stopped and I just cannot forget. I think we were the only two in the room when because we ran past everybody like we were not waiting for anyone and the doctor just stepped back and said time of death 550 and I just I, I really feel like I I died myself in that moment. Like yeah. I I I didn't even believe what he was saying. Like I couldn't even process anything that he just said and even the doctor was crying and he just said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry and I couldn't even tell you like anything else. Like I'm just to this day speechless about that moment. We just sat with him for a few hours and we didn't know what was going to happen next but we were just with him. We were just sitting with him and I kept leaving the room because I couldn't bear to just sit and look at him that way but I also didn't want to leave him because I didn't know when I'm going to get to see him again and I knew that this would the la be the last time that I saw him like as he was we just sat there like everybody kind of kept rotating around like between like going up to him and kissing him and hugging him and talking to him and i remember being really confused because his nose kept dripping like pink fluid just kept dripping out of his nose and so we just fluid. yeah so we just kept wiping his nose and i was thinking like how is he gone if like any like i didn't understand what was happening like to me i thought that he was alive and I could have sworn that I saw him breathe like a few different times but obviously he didn't and the longer we were with him like mm. it just got worse that he was like getting colder and more stiff and then it was just getting a lot more upsetting to be in there they basically took us out of the room and said that the medical examiner was there so he had to look at Noah and stuff like that so we all left for a while and they said we'd be able to go back in after the medical examiner looks at him and so we left without like saying bye or anything and then when we were in the little waiting room area they were like oh yeah like you're not like that was it you can't go back and see him again and we were like nobody told us that like all this stuff and then they were like no actually you can go back and see him one more time like it was just like we all just sat in like the family room and they sent the chaplain in there, but I really just didn't care to hear anything he had to say or anybody for that matter. I just was just crying and thinking like, how am I going to survive this? Because I don't think I can. That's honestly what I was thinking. I also remember really badly wanting to change his diaper because it was so full. Um, like we had used like nighttime diapers for him because he would pee so much like with a regular diaper he would always like we would wake up and all three of us would be covered in Noah's pee because <laughs> he always peed through the diaper and obviously that morning we didn't change his diaper because we had just found him the way he was so we were all just rushing with him and I just remember looking at like his clothes and his diaper and I was like I just wish I could change his diaper right now because his diaper is so full like he needs a new diaper like it's so weird I feel like it might sound weird to other people but I just wanted to like take him home and take care of him. <sighs> you would think that that was like the worst of it, but it 
kept getting worse. We did get to go back in and I think that time we just went by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like we let everybody else go say goodbye to him. And then me and him just stayed in there for a little bit longer. And like I wanted to leave, but I also just couldn't bring myself to say goodbye to him. So I don't even remember if I did. I just remember like trying to look really hard at him and just try to really soak in what he looked like because I knew that was it. Um, and then when we left, I kind of was just like in shock, very much in shock. So we were walking out and I was just trying to breathe. And then as soon as we walked out the door, I just like, I think it finally hit me what just happened. Like I finally had one second to just kind of tell myself what just happened. And I, again, just absolutely lost it. I didn't even say anything. I don't think I was just screaming for him and crying yeah. and I couldn't walk. Like my legs just gave out from under me. And it felt like, it felt like I had a string attached to me and him, mm -hmm. like through my heart. And like, that, that's the only way I can describe it. It's like, as soon as I walked out the hospital doors, it felt like it ripped. Mm -hmm. And so, I felt extreme physical pain, like the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Like my chest was burning yeah. and my yeah. back felt like the sharpest pain go up my spine. Like it felt like somebody was stabbing me. This whole time as I'm doing this, there is like loud thunder and it starts raining it and raining it so just it's dark outside. It was very, very gloomy outside, mm. but it was pouring down rain, lightning, thunder, like. That whole week it was like that. Yeah, for those first few days it was. It rained really hard and the thunder was like so bad. It was shaking the house and you know, like usually you'll see the lightning flashes mm -hmm. and you know, a couple of seconds later it was like immediately. Yeah, after like very flash. loud too like it was not like distant thunder like it was very very it loud right and very there. close like it was right there at the house <sighs> yeah and when we got back to the house it just kept going um as soon as we got there the medical examiners were there at our front door they saw us drive past our house because they were standing at the front door saw us park in the driveway heard all of us get out of the car Heard all of the doors shut. So it's plenty of time to know that the family is back home. And we walk up to the door and they're laughing. I don't know what they were talking about, but whatever it was, I imagine wasn't important. But yeah, we walked up to them and they were laughing and even looking at us, didn't think to stop. They just basically finished laughing and then stepped out of the way so we could open the door. And I get it that these people are like desensitized because it's a job to them, but in my opinion, that was like extremely unprofessional and just like a really horrible way to act in front of a family that just lost a child. Um, but they were pretty much horrible to us and insensitive the entire time and treating us like criminals, which I understand there's people that do hurt their babies, but the system is supposed to be innocent until proven guilty and they were definitely treating us like guilty until proven innocent which in our case obviously we are innocent so it was just extra trauma and extra pain added on top of an already horrible day and so they immediately start questioning us just asking all of these like questions that we don't even it's just hard to explain how we really felt because it, this is like moments later like we did they didn't even give us a day to just absorb everything like we were immediately like thrown into this like investigation basically police medical examiners DCF everybody's there they um, they made us get into our bed and they gave us a baby doll and they recorded us and took photos of us having us reenact the entire thing there was nobody there to just comfort us nobody there was one lady that was supposed to be like some victim advocate or whatever but she did literally nothing 
she was the first person we spoke to and she just starts spitting questions at me like tell me about noah do you want to talk about noah what kind of baby was he like and i'm like i cannot do this right now like the whole situation just felt like so badly handled they took all of noah's things pretty much out of his crib like he didn't have things in his crib but they took like his sheets and they took our bed sheets and our comforters and everything pillowcases i think um they took like random things they took photos of like the entire house pretty much they took photos of like a christmas decoration or something because they said it looked odd i have no idea like they were just being very weird i was trying to remind myself like this is their job there are people that unfortunately hurt their children so they have to do this but it just i was so hurt and so offended as somebody who yeah. wanted this child so badly to be treated like it's even a possibility that i did something to him or that we did something to him they even started questioning me because of xavier being prior military and started asking me like if he's ever been abusive and like does he get frustrated does has he ever choked the baby like just things that were like mm. i again i understand that there are people in the world like that but we are not those people so it was just i just wanted to scream at all of them like find out what happened and it's nothing here like this baby was very loved by everybody like he mm. nobody wanted to hurt this child nobody finally when they left i think me and him sat in here and cried together for maybe 45 seconds before the next person was at the door and says hi i'm from dcf i'm really sorry but i'm here to drug test you and your entire family and i was just like okay sure oh my gosh. and i was like i don't care what you do because we have nothing to hide um drug test whatever you want i don't care like we did not hurt our son i'm willing to do whatever it takes to prove that to you um so we all got drug tested and obviously we were all negative she kept saying like i'm really sorry like i usually don't come over here until about a week later or at least a few days but they were pushing me to come now because somebody had wrote on our paperwork that we were inadequate parents um which i don't know why i don't know if that's because we were young or because he was in our bed but somebody thought that we weren't good parents so then she also had to ask us to give collateral from at least two people so she finished talking to us and we came back in and told all of our family which once we got back to the house like all of the family was there all of the family friends were there like everybody was there and so we told them all like they're asking if two people can come out and basically testify that we were good parents to noah because somebody in the investigation thought that maybe it was intentional our, our entire family went out there every single person went out yeah. there to tell them that we were good parents to him so it probably 20 30 40 people something like that all went out there and she said oh i only need two people and they were like well we're all coming here to tell you this like write it down that all of us came out here to tell you um and i just remember like oh there's so much <laughs> there's so much to talk about the first few nights trying to sleep trying to eat anything you just i just felt so drained and like i just didn't care to do any of that and so we just, we just i we tossed and turned for nights it just, like, another thing that sucked was that you go from having this schedule with your child and it's just not there anymore and, and like we kept and it's from the first night after to like probably a week out a week and a half or so we kept waking up around 3 a.m mm -hmm. and we could which, swear that we heard him cry which but at the same time 3 a.m was generally the time we woke up you know he was waking up in the middle of the night it would be around 3 a.m or 2 or like you know almost 4 when he wakes up to when he's hungry and we would get up and feed him change his diaper and put him back to sleep and we would just wake up and remember there was a night that we both woke up separately around 3 and I think I was just laying there and I just looked at his crib and I could have swore I thought he was in there and yeah. when I like really looked and I saw that it was empty I just did a big sigh and she um, was like, are you awake? And I was like, yeah. And we just turned and looked at each other and we were just like shaking our heads like, just can you 
believed. Like it just felt like a nightmare mm -hmm. that just would never end. It and still feels like that. Yeah. yeah. And it was December still, obviously. So this whole time, there's like Christmas decorations all through the house. Christmas, Christmas music. music playing. So that was like we have these Christmas decorations outside or had. Um, that would like play music automatically yeah. and oh my gosh i can't tell you how triggering that music was to me it just i can't tell you how much it was it just was and then we had to plan his funeral yeah my um i think for the most part my stepmom um she was handling all yeah. that for us and the only thing was probably the day he passed away or the day after i walked up to xavier and like pulled him aside and said like do you want to do burial or cremation like that was the only thing that i was like very quick to ask and talk about because i already knew what i wanted i mean both options are awful but for me personally mm -hmm. cremation was the lesser of the two evils because at least he could be in our house with us yeah. and I was scared of burial for many different reasons. One, for the plain fact of what it is. Two, because I knew having to watch a burial of my son and having to get a little tiny casket, just um, Noah was in a bassinet for his funeral because we didn't want him in a casket. So we put him in a bassinet. That was very pretty bassinet. It was white and had- Had a flower garland all yeah, around Yeah, he had a it. flower garland over him and like a silky drape throughout the whole thing. Like yeah. it was, it was nice. Um, we had flowers everywhere, just blue flowers everywhere. So as much as I hated it, it was a good service. I'm glad we went with cremation. We both instantly agreed on it. Like yeah. we were very glad that we were on the same page about pretty much everything because that's probably one of the hardest parts about going through child loss is that everybody reacts very differently to it and especially yeah. in a marriage it can be very very hard because mm -hmm. even two people going through the exact same situation can react completely different ways mm -hmm. so we were lucky to be basically exactly the same in our grief almost identical there was a few different things like me i could not stand to sleep in this room after losing him but you felt close to him in here yeah i mean that didn't cause anything between us but i just yeah that was just that was one random difference that we had you know the big things like the decisions and stuff we were all on the same page about luckily we got like hand and feet molds from the funeral home. They cut off a lock of his hair for us. Yeah, you know, we had to go pick up his ashes and stuff, which was really, really awful. There's, there's nothing quite like that. But um, I mean, we didn't see anything. We brought the urns to her and she filled them in the back and then brought them out to us. And it was just very, it's just, I don't know. You can't explain it and you can't understand it until you've been through it, but it was just the most defeated feeling to just look at a box and think like, that's it. That's all I have now to show for mm -hmm. the last year and a half, pretty much, almost two years, honestly, of pregnancy and having him for eight months. Like, it's all just confined to this now. We got his autopsy probably about three months after he passed away um, and it didn't get sent to us but uh, I was talking to one of my friends that lost a child and she said that she had to reach out to them at about three months and they said it was ready so I did the same thing and they said it was ready and they emailed it to me everything was perfect he was physically perfect baby mm -hmm. there was nothing wrong with him overall the findings let me see actually because i i don't remember the words exactly right so the physical finding were pulmonary congestion and edema and cerebral edema so those were the physical i guess scientifically correct whatever ways to word it what they wrote as the manner of death was an accident and the cause of death they wrote positional asphyxia due to unsafe infant sleeping environment me personally i was putting a lot of pressure on the autopsy report i was really hoping that it was going to be SIDS because that would have made me feel like i did everything that i could but this 
finding just absolutely set me back a hundred steps in my mm. grief and made me feel like the worst parent in the world. Mm. Made me feel like it was my fault. Made me feel like I did this to him. And then at this point, we had gained a lot of attention, I guess, or a lot of people have come across our TikTok, which there was already lots of people telling me how much of a horrible mother I am and that I did this to him. So to have that autopsy read that felt like confirmation of that to me. So that was like probably the hardest part for me personally. They said that he had fluid in his lungs, so I don't know if that had anything to do with, I, I don't, I don't know. That's all we know. Yeah. But we have basically decided to just, you know, that's just a piece of paper. We know what kind of parents we were to him. We did the best. We know yeah. how, we know that he knew how loved he was mm -hmm. and how loved he still is. He's still so loved and mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to focus on. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. Basically the only advice we can give if anybody is specifically looking at our story is maybe just try to crib sleep it sucks because it wasn't like we weren't like unaware of any other risk we were very aware we were very since losing our, our first pregnancy we were scared and holding our breath this entire pregnancy with him we had him and then even then we were still you know on edge always making sure he's doing this always making sure he's doing that but now i've been pregnant twice since losing noah miscarried both times so now we're kind of wondering if Noah was like a miracle child. And another thing, even if we do have another baby, a lot of people fail to realize that doesn't change anything about Noah being gone. Like, would we be very blessed and lucky and happy to have another very baby? Cool. Of yeah. course, we would, we would be so happy to have another baby. But because I've had two miscarriages now since losing him, we're just taking a break and we're just trying to focus on other things right now. The, yeah, one of the biggest things that I said that I think that has helped us and I think a lot of people should take with them is, is just turn into Christ. Yeah. You know, we went to church and it really woke us up and we turned to Christ and we surrendered, you know, so much pain to Him that, you know, we didn't even realize, you know, how different it could be if we did it. You know, we don't even think, <laughs> I don't even here. think I'd be alive today. And just turning to Christ has brought so many different things to light and it has, you know, brought so many promises to our life and, you know. It's made it so that some people are not going to understand what I'm about to say, but you really just can't understand it until you've been through it. So I can't explain it in a way that you would understand, but basically like we don't like to word things as like oh good things have come from it or at least i don't to me i feel like noah passing away is just noah passing away it just sucks and it happened and i can't change it that's by itself have things happened after the fact i guess like i that's what i'm trying to say it's like yes some good things have happened now after the fact but i don't like to associate that with oh this happened because Noah passed away. It's just something that like upsets me to think of in that way. So mm -hmm. I always just try to word it differently. Like that all the pain is not for nothing. Like if he absolutely has to be gone, at least it's not that he passed away, we lost him and then nothing, nothing good ever happens ever again. And it's just all the pain is for absolutely nothing. There's just nothing good about it, but we're trying. We're here. That's really all we can do right now. It's probably all we have the energy for today. We appreciate all of the support from everybody yeah. a lot. It's definitely one of the things, one of the very few things that is keeping us going is the support from other people and the encouragement from other parents that have lost a child that feel supported and seen through us. So that's something that, we're, that keeps us going.